everyone is losing weight with Zempic or Wegovy, but nobody is talking about the eye health complications from it. You want to find out if you are at risk from losing vision from taking that diet medication. Keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, eye makeup health, and a little bit about my life here in Hawaii. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit that bell button, like, follow, subscribe, do all the things so that you can get these videos as soon as I make them. All right, you cannot turn on, I was gonna say turn on a TV, but who honestly watches TV anymore? All right, you cannot open your phone without seeing some new celebrity that is talking about how amazing their weight loss transformation is with Ozempic or Wagovi. It's actually even its own hashtag on TikTok. I'm seeing it all over the place. And I'm seeing a lot of doctors actually cautioning about the differences, some of the possible side effects, but I haven't seen anyone yet talk about the eye health consequences. There are vision consequences to being on these medications. And that's what we're talking about today. All right, first, what is Ozempic? What is Wagovi? Ozempic is the one you've probably heard of, but Wagovi is the exact same thing. And actually, Wagovi is the one that's FDA approved for weight loss. Ozempic is actually FDA approved for diabetes, but the medications are the same because the generic name for it is semaglutide. What semaglutide is, it's glucagon-like peptide dash one, GLP-1. It's an agonist, which means it acts the same as a hormone that's released by the intestinal cells. What it does is it slows down the emptying in your stomach and decreases absorption of glucose or sugar, which is why it's so good at treating diabetes and for weight loss. Basically, semaglutide mimics a hormone that makes you feel full. And that's what is Ozempic and Wagovi. Now, the difference between them, as I mentioned, is Wagovi is the one that is actually FDA approved for weight loss. You have to have a BMI, which is a body mass index over 27, and one of the three associated medical conditions that's usually caused by weight gain, diabetes, hypertension, and high cholesterol. Otherwise, you have to have a BMI over 30. Now, Ozempic, which you're seeing all over, usually because of the hashtag and all the people that are talking about it, is not FDA approved for weight loss, but it's the same medicine. The only difference is the dosage of the medicine. For Ozempic, it's two milligrams. For Wagovi, it's 2.4 milligrams. But both of them can have vision-threatening eye consequences. So one of our ophthalmology journals actually looked at the original Ozempic trial, and they found that there were 2,100 cases of adverse events. Now that can be anything from like headaches to nausea to whatever, something more serious. And of that 2,100 cases of adverse events, 140 of them had some kind of vision change, either worsening of macula swelling, the diabetic retinopathy in their eyes got worse, or just blurred vision. Okay, what does all of that mean? So because Ozempic and Wagovi work by decreasing the way your body absorbs sugar, it causes this tremendous decrease in your blood sugar. That's the whole point of it, right? And it also decreases your hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C is the marker that we use to check diabetes control. So this comes into my territory because as a physician, a medical doctor who takes care of a lot of patients with diabetes, we always have to be checking the eye disease from the diabetes. I've got a ton of endocrinologists. Those are doctors that take care of diabetes in my family, two sister-in-laws. My father-in-law was an endocrinologist. I, of course, do not take care of diabetes personally, but they end up sending me a lot of their patients because we have to check the eyes of every single diabetic patient, young child or older adult, doesn't matter. We have to check the retina. That's the whole reason you come in for your eye exam, you get your eyes dilated, and we look at the back of the eye called the fundus or the retina. Now, what they found is that with the semaglutides, with both Ozempic and Wagovi, patients actually had worsening of their diabetic eye changes 
when they were on the medicine. So what kind of diabetic eye changes am I talking about? This is specifically referred to as diabetic retinopathy. So at the back of your eye is the retina. We used to call it the camera film of the eye, but nobody seems to know what camera film is nowadays. But it's the very inner lining of the inside of your eye, and it's what transmits all the signals to the brain and sends all the vision connections, right? It sends all the neural impulses. So the retina is very important. So when you have diabetic retinopathy, the high blood sugar from diabetes damages the tiny blood vessels in the back of the eye, in the retina. That damage causes the blood vessels to swell and to leak. They can even cause the blood vessels to occlude, which is basically just totally get very obstructed, or they can cause these tiny, small little blood vessels to grow where they're not supposed to. These new blood vessels that are growing because there's not enough oxygen getting to your retina, they break and they're very fragile and they cause a lot of the problems associated with diabetic eye disease. So there's two kinds of diabetic retinopathy. There's non-proliferative and proliferative. The non-proliferative is not as severe. It's basically when the blood vessels start to leak and swell, they can cause swelling of the macula, which is called macular edema. The macula is the centermost aspect of your retina. It's responsible for the majority of your central vision. It can cause little blood spots and little what we call cotton wool spots. Cotton wool spots are areas where oxygen's not getting into the retina. It can cause a buildup of exudate called hard exudate. So these are all things that we can see in the retina, which is the whole reason that we need to know if you're being checked or examined for diabetes and why we always have to dilate your eyes, because I can't see any of these changes if your pupils aren't dilated. You can get lots of tiny little bleeding spots, things called microaneurysms or dot blot hemorrhages. These are all different types of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Now, the other more severe type of diabetic retinopathy is called proliferative diabetic retinopathy. That's when there's just such a lack of oxygen getting to your retina because of the diabetes that all these really tiny new blood vessels form called neovascularization, just these tiny little blood vessels. And you might think tiny little blood vessels is good, right? You need blood vessels because there's no oxygen. Well, the problem is these blood vessels are very fragile and they break and they bleed and they swell, cause swelling all over your retina. So they can cause bleeding into your vitreous, called a vitreous hemorrhage. They can actually, over a long period of time, cause a retinal detachment. So these are really problematic. Now, what are you gonna experience? You probably know, right? If your diabetic eye disease is getting worse, unfortunately, you don't know, especially early on. You can have absolutely no symptoms when you have pretty severe diabetic eye disease. It could be like a tipping point. It gets really bad right before it gets so bad that it affects your vision. So you might not notice anything at all, but some people will notice an increasing number of floaters. They may notice blurred vision, having any kind of vision change, seeing dark fields in your fields of vision, poor night vision, feeling like just you don't see as well, your vision is just not as good, you're losing vision, or colors may seem just not as saturated as before. You might have a retinal detachment, which would cause a loss of vision in an entire field, like your top half of, can't even see, it's like a curtain falling down. So those are all signs of really advanced diabetic retinopathy and diabetic eye disease, but we don't want it to get to that point. So how's this all related to Ozempic and Wagovi? Well, what they found was that all of these changes in your retina, they actually got worse in people that were on both of these medicines. Now, that seems crazy, right? You're on a medicine to either help your diabetes or improve your weight so that your diabetes will get better secondarily, and all of a sudden you're noticing that the eye disease from the diabetes is worse. Well, this is actually not a new phenomenon. There have been a lot of studies 20, 30 years ago, back when I was in training. One of them is called the Diabetes Control and Complications Trial. And they actually showed that people, when they had better and tighter control of their blood sugar levels, actually had worsening of the retina changes early on. And we've seen the same thing where people that are getting really intense insulin treatment, or if you've had bariatric surgery, or even a pancreas transplant, all the things that would make you have really good control of your sugars you think would be a good thing, we've seen a worsening of the retina associated with that as well. So this isn't that new to know that Ozempic and Wagovi cause worsening of the diabetic retina in your eye. So is that a reason to stop it? If you go into your eye doctor and they say, oh my gosh, I see, your doctor doesn't say, oh my gosh, 
I wouldn't say, oh my gosh, in person, I would say, I would talk. So maybe you go into your doctor and your doctor notices that there's more bleeding in the back of the eye. There's more areas where there's not oxygen. Is that a reason to stop the medication? Well, not really. I mean, the whole point of these medicines is to help with your heart, your cardiovascular risk factors. We want to improve your mortality. We wanna make you live longer. So just having the eye findings get worse, that's not necessarily a reason in and of itself to stop the medicines because there's all different consequences. There's cardiovascular, brain, cerebrovascular, and sometimes those are much more significant than the small microvascular changes we see in the eye. And some of those studies that I mentioned, that DCCT study, that big study, well, actually, even though initially people's retinas got worse once they had better sugar control, over the long term, everything looked better. Their eyes and their retinas looked better. So hopefully that's what we're also going to find with Ozempic and Wagovia. It's just too early to tell. But if your ophthalmologist finds any eye findings and worsening of your retinopathy, then they're gonna talk about it with your doctor who's prescribed the medicine and they're going to come to a joint decision, but likely it doesn't mean you need to stop the medication. So rest assured, that's not the case. Bottom line, usually what that'll mean is just that we follow you a little bit more closely. So it's important for us to know all the medicines that you're on. If you're going into your eye doctor, please let us know if you're on either of these medicines because it's a good reason for us to just check the eyes and for you to get a baseline eye exam before you start Ozempic or Wagovi just so we know what your retinas look like and then we can continue to monitor and observe them. If we see any changes, we might just wanna watch you a little more closely, seeing you every six months instead of once a year or every four months instead of every six months. But again, rest assured, it's not a reason to necessarily stop the medicine completely. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful at giving you a little bit more information about potentially vision-threatening complications of these two medicines I am seeing all over the place. If you have a question or a comment, drop it below, and I'm happy to answer. And if you've got an idea for a topic, drop that below. I'd love to see it. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.